thing you got to do And when it comes to picking partners I'll even go as far as two But seven at one Hold on, seven at one Hold on, seven at one Bang, 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 bang! Goodbye, Charlie! Hey, 
welcome. Crafty, how nice of you to pick me up. My dear boy, uh, it was the very least I could do. I only wish it could have been under happier circumstances. What an awful thing to have happened. Shocking, terrible thing. Porter. Sorry. How was your flight, George? Tiring. <laughs> Just the first 6,000 miles. I'll bet you we flew over both poles, north and south. Porter. And it wasn't just a flight out of Paris. You know, your cable didn't catch me until I was in Biarritz. Then I had to drive all night long to get back to Paris. And then there was this unbelievable series of foul-ups until I finally arranged to get on the plane. And crafty old boy, I have really had it. I can imagine. Uh, but I want you to know I think it was absolutely marvelous of you to drop everything and get here. I really appreciate it, George. And I know that if Charlie knew... Skip it. I'm here because I want to be here. I'll meet you gentlemen at auto exit downstairs. My car's parked just outside. Uh, Black Rolls Royce MC1. I knew you were hard at work, George. But I just couldn't conceive of anybody else speaking a, a few words of farewell at Charlie's memorial service. Uh, I know. Now, look, I'm going to do my best. I want you to know that I'm not very good at this. Ah, uh, now, look. Now, you'll I took be some fine. notes on the plane, but... You will be absolutely now. wonderful. I... You go in and take care of the crowd. I'll get the bag. Go ahead. Come on, open the door. Come on. Janie. <laughs> nice to see you. Isn't Kenneth here yet? Oh, Ken was heartbroken he couldn't be here, darling. But he's in the semifinals of the golf tournament at Hillcrest. Mm -hmm. And George, it's wonderful to see you. I only wish it could be... Could have be been under happier circumstances, yes. Of course, I didn't know Charlie that well. He was more a friend of my husband's mm -hmm. than of mine, but I always admired... What happened? Him. Where is everybody? Well, I don't think anybody else is coming. Granny and I have been here over an hour. Sir, is it possible the wrong address was given for the service? Don't be ridiculous. My office personally sent out all the telegrams. Crafty, Harry asked me to explain that he wanted to be here, but some exhibitors came in from Ohio. Hello, Sue. Listen, Sue, I'm out here at the, at the beach house. There's practically nobody. Well, I know you sent everybody wires, but you should have followed up by phone. Well, you did follow up by phone. Well, the golf tournament couldn't keep everybody from coming. But this is only Tuesday. Nobody goes to Palm Springs before, before the weekend. Oh, well, what about the Writers Guild? Surely they're going to send somebody. He owes how many years dues? All right, Sue. Seems to be one of those days when nobody can get away. Crafty, can't we begin? I don't think anybody else is coming. Now? But uh, don't you think we ought to wait just a few more minutes? Dear boy, turnout-wise, this isn't what we hoped for. But I'm very much afraid this is it. Just us? But people may be on their way, maybe hung up in traffic or something. George, eh? I'd be the last to hurry you in a matter like this. But the fact is, I'm giving a little dinner party at LaRue, so if we could yeah. just get cracking. Yeah, I understand. I want you to know I'm not very good at this sort of thing. Sir, if it would be at all helpful, we brought along a tape recording of Handel's Messiah, sung by the Vienna Choir. Thanks. Uh, some other time, maybe. Mister, please. <clears throat> well, here we are. Those of us who are Charlie Sorrell's friends gathered in his house while somewhere out there in the vast ocean lies Charlie. First and uh, foremost, I would like to uh, thank all of you here for coming out. I know that poor Charlie would have been, well, I don't know if he'd been gratified by the size of the gathering, but he would have been pleased to know that those who love the most in life have gathered here to honor him in death. Uh, Morton Craft is trusted and devoted agent. Uh, the lovely Mrs. Salzman, Franny to all of us who's here representing a husband, Mr. Harry Salzman, uh, the head of Charlie's studio. 
and Janie, Mrs. Kenneth Highland, whose husband directed several of Charlie's scripts. Um, I'm terribly sorry to be so awkward at this, but uh, it's not an easy task. The rather ghastly circumstances of his actual demise make it extremely difficult to think of anything to say about the poor, about our poor departed friend. I'm sure we all remember his wonderful zest for life and good living. His superior knowledge of wines. Uh, then too there was his, his superb backhand. And um, there was his uh, fearlessness on the ski slopes. And uh, finally I would like to uh, uh, say a few words about his value to the hostesses of this community as an extra man. Now that in itself and I'm sure Franny would be the first one to admit, is no mean thing. The number of presentable and unattached men who are uh, available at a relatively short notice is uh, rather limited, to say the least. Uh, oh, what's the use? Charlie was Charlie. What more can I tell you? Uh, some of us loved him and some of us hated him, and some of us loved and hated him both. Anyway, he's gone, and he went to paraphrase Mr. Elliot. Not with a whimper, but with a bang. <clears throat> well, that's it. I mean, I'm sorry I wasn't more eloquent, but I told you I wasn't very good at this sort of thing. That was beautiful, George. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Extremely tasteful, dear boy. And if I may say so, very touchy. It was so nice to see you again, uh, George. I'm sorry I have to rush off so soon, but I'm chairman of the Beverly Hills PTA, and there's just so much to do, what with the committee. Goodbye, Franny. My best to Harry. I actually didn't think I'd get through with it. I've got a great longing for about eight days of uninterrupted sleep. Precisely what you need, dear boy. I think you'll find everything here in the house that you require. When you get a moment, you might just glance through these. Charlie's estate. The will named you as executor. Me, executor? Why would he do a stupid thing like that? But don't worry, dear boy. If you'll just glance through this financial statement, you'll see what I mean. The assets are principally this house, his car, and his clothing. The house is heavily mortgaged. There's a big loan on the car, and most of the clothing isn't paid for. All this for back taxes? Didn't he ever pay them? Seldom, if ever. Well, dear boy, as you so aptly put it, Charlie was Charlie. Goodbye, dear boy. Make yourself comfortable. I'll be in touch with you. Uh, goodbye, Janie. Bye, Crafty. George, darling, I really must rush, too. It's been so nice seeing you again. And what you said really touched, don't get it, really touched me. You know, I, I feel a better person somehow, a little finer and more noble. George, uh, somewhere around this house is a dinner dress of mine. I left it here one night. Well, I couldn't very well wear it home in broad daylight, could I? I understand. You want me to go look for it now? Oh, no, no, darling. But if you find it, uh, would you just mail it to me? It's an original. Cost 850 bucks. Sure, Janie, sure. Thanks, George. Bye-bye. I'll put your bags in the bedroom, sir. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Our after-grief service will remove the chairs tomorrow. Thank you. Will there be anything else this evening, sir? I sincerely hope not. Good night, sir. Good night. Charlie, you poor old goat. I'm gonna miss you, kid.
Beg your pardon, sir. I'm sorry, but the services are over. Everybody's been and gone. Excuse me, sir, but I, I encountered this young lady on the highway. My friend, you and your friend... She's not my friend, but she was... That, that is to say, she... Well, she was undressed, and I gave her my coat. Uh, you want the Malibu Motel. No, it's nothing Malibu like that. Boat. I'm on my way to Santa Barbara, a rather important dinner, my mother's birthday, and I'm, I'm late already, but she asked me to bring her here. Here? Well, why on earth here? I never saw it before in my life. Well, she didn't exactly ask, but when she saw the house, your house, well, she made me stop and bring her in. So if you don't mind, I'll be on my way uh, and you can no, take over. just a minute. For one thing, it's not my house. You don't know me, do you? Do you? Don't she talk? I, I'm afraid she's ill. Her memory is uh, uh, like amnesia. Oh, come on. No, I was planning to take her to a doctor, a hospital. Well, take her, take no, her. No, here, please. You want Charlie Sorrell, don't you? You're one of Charlie Sorrell's friends, aren't you? Charlie Sorrell? Charlie Sorrell? Uh, look, sir, she knows this place. She must belong here. And I've got good grief. Excuse my language, sir, but my mother will be so disappointed if I'm not there when they bring in the cake. You understand, You are not leaving here without her. I I'll call you tomorrow. You found her. She's yours. Come, come, come I, back! I, I'm deeply indebted to you, sir. Uh, don't worry about my coat. I hope that the young lady makes a, a swift and complete recovery. Goodbye. Come back here! She's sick! Leave her here like this! Come back! Madam X, wake up. Speak to me. All right, don't speak to me. I'll speak to me. Well, what kind of a day did you have, George? Smashing. Exactly have to uh, force that down your throat, did I? It's good. What is it? It's brandy. Where have you been all your life? I don't know. I can't remember anything about anything. I know. Amnesia. Amnesia? No, it's a, it's a television disease, but never mind about that. Uh, what do you remember? Only being on the highway. The man giving me his coat. I was shivering in the car, and suddenly I saw this house and felt if I could just be inside, I'd be safe. <laughs> and safe? In Charlie Sorrell's house? Charlie Sorrell? Mm-hmm. You must have known him. That's why the house struck a chord. Come on now, well, why don't you get up and take a good look around? Come on. Tell you what, there's a terrific little hospital down the road in Malibu. 
I'm gonna phone for a cab. Please, no. Please, yes. Please, let me stay. I'm sure I'll remember something here. Just till the morning. Please. Till the morning? Are you kidding? You may not know it, but you're a very pretty girl. And furthermore, you're not dressed for house guesting. And in addition, how do I know, but you may have a husband the size of a house that's out looking for you right now. Now you got me doing it. My, my name's George Tracy. George Tracy. My name won't mean a thing. Charlie Sorrell. That's the one to concentrate on. This is his house. You remember Charlie Sorrell? Big guy with broad... Skip it. Well, I think you got everything. Good night. No. Don't leave me. Please. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll leave the door open, but that's the best I can do. Good night. of a deep sea diver. Oh. What was it, a nightmare? Huh? George, don't you know me? Yeah, I know you. You don't know you. That's your problem. George, look at me. Will you please go to sleep? George, it's Charlie. It's Charlie Sorrell. Now, I'm Charlie Sorrell. Okay, miss. Okay. Any, anything you say, anything at all. But will you please go to sleep before I hit you over the head with this lamp? Oh. George. Nice. I don't understand this any more than you. Oh. But I'm Charlie Sorrell. It suddenly came to me in my sleep. Sleep, thanks. Now, George, wake up, George, please. George, I'm your best friend, Charlie Sorrell. Because it's first thing in the morning. Good night. George, it's true. Leo Satori caught me making a pass at Rusty on the yacht, and he shot me. That's nice. Now, George, George, you listen to me. Your name is George W. Tracy. The W stands for Wellington. You live at 231 Avenue Kleber in Paris. Your telephone number is Balzac 4889. You have a mole on your left shoulder blade. Look, sister, I don't know what the gag is, but I've had a very rough day, right? In 1950, we wrote a picture together based on an original story. You sold the studio. We had a secretary named Shirley something, lived on Fountain Avenue. And neither of us knew the other was making out with her until we bumped into each other on the stairs one rainy Sunday afternoon, right? Who put you up to this? Was it crafty? 
Your bank in Paris is the first national city branch in the Place Vendôme. Two years ago, you cast a check for me for $1,000. It bounced, but I made it good when I got lucky at the Cannes Film Festival. I gave you the money and chips, right? And that same weekend, you nearly drowned when my surfboard hit you in the head, right? No. Doesn't that prove I'm Charlie? All it proves is that you knew Charlie, and he told you all these things. I am Charlie, you stubborn bonehead! What about the time you took that producer's girlfriend, the redhead, to Tijuana for the bullfights, but you got stuck there because it turned out she wasn't an American citizen and didn't have a re-entry permit? I get it. I get it. You're, uh, you're one of Charlie's girls, and he, he promised to marry you or borrowed money from you. Well, you're wasting your time because he's not going to marry or pay back the dough because he's dead. D E A. Tea. Uh, you can stay the night, have a hot breakfast, and out. Okay, George. I didn't want to hurt you, but you're asking for it. Last Christmas, just three months ago, you were in San Moritz with a model from Harper's, Elsa Underwood. You were crazy about her. You even talked of getting married. But she got a telegram from Dick Avedon and had to rush back to Paris for retakes. Dick Avedon, my foot. That telegram was a phony. She came back to meet some guy, and they were shacked up in some hotel. The Ritz, George, in a suite overlooking the Place Vendôme. It was me, George. I'm sorry. You dirty rat. I should have known. She was no good, George. And my good friend Charlie Sorrell's got to be the one to prove it to me, right? Yeah, you were getting serious you about her. I couldn't let you. I did it for you, George. Me? My word of honor. Ah, Charlie Sorrell's word of you honor. You could have been badly hurt, George, and I That's didn't want That's enough, to stand Charlie. Drop it. I am now, don't you, George? Now you know why I was screaming. What kind of a weird setup is this? What's going on? George, what am I going to do? George? George! 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 And then this cat in a big black Ferrari. He came screaming to a stop. He bundled me up in his coat and he stuck well, me in look, a car. Now, now, look, I know all about that. But what about the actual uh, transition? I mean, don't you have any clue to that? This isn't easy to assimilate, you know. You're telling me. Yeah. Once and for all. Will you stop worrying about petty details and just take a good look at the whole ghastly overall picture? What do they want from me? How long is this going to last? Am I going to be hung up like this for the rest of my life? Now, Charlie, come on now. Let's, let's be calm. Let's not lose our heads. Now, there's probably some perfectly simple explanation for the whole thing. Like what? I don't know. And stop yelling at me or I'll walk right out of here. I'm not in trouble, you know. You're in trouble. I'm not a girl. You're a girl. George, George, you can't leave me. I'm trapped. Well, I'm only trying to do my best to help you, but apparently... My best isn't George, good enough. you got to stick by me. For a while, anyway. George, if you walk... George, if you walk out on me, I swear I'm going to walk right back into that ocean and drown myself. And the way they got this thing rigged, I'll, I'll probably bounce right back. Like a yo-yo. Well, huh. all, all right, Charlie, but uh, no more flare-ups, okay? Get calm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Attaboy. I'm calm. Steady, steady. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm steady, and I'm calm. Now what? Now. The thing is to look at this as uh, calmly and as realistically as possible. 
you, Charlie Sorrell, for reasons that we don't understand and uh, probably wouldn't even care to discuss, are no longer a man. You're a girl. If only you'd been anything else. If only I'd been washed up on that beach as anything. Animal, vegetable, mineral, but not a girl. Not a girl. Oh, come on, Charlie. It's not fair to indict the entire sex. I thought you liked girls. In fact, that was one of your big problems in life. Well, let me tell you a thing or two about those gorgeous girls, George. Nuts! Dangerous, psychotic, truly demented cuckoos. As cute and cuddly as a flight of tracer bullets. They can have lovers the way other people eat cherries. But if you take another girl, even the lunch and a drive-in, whammo! They lie to me and to you, to their husbands, to their lovers, to their analysts, and the cashier in the supermarket. Oh, I know I've been accused of treating girls badly, George, and I have. But only in self-defense. Charlie, suddenly, suddenly the whole thing is blindingly clear. What whole thing? This thing that's happened to you. There is an all-wise, all-seeing providence, and you are its special baby. What are you talking about? It's the Old Testament speaking. The master plan. An eye for an eye. A tooth for a tooth. Cut it out, George. You're scaring the hell out of me. But there's a grandeur about it that's staggering. All your life, you've taken advantage of women. You've been the wolf, let loose on the Assyrian fold. And now, the punishment has been created. Custom tailored, in fact, to fit the crime. The tables have been turned, Charlie. Instead of pitching, you are the catcher. What a horrible thought. It's as though I'd been a gourmet all my life, and now suddenly I'm a lamb chop. George, do you realize I hit you with my left? Huh? You did? Oh, yeah, it's okay, Charlie. None of the George, it was my left, my famous left hook. You always said it was lethal. You should have gone down like a sack of oatmeal. Yeah. Uh. <sighs> Nothing! No, this is too much! I will stand for it! Charlie, no, Maybe no, I haven't been to West Coast Doctor Spritzer. No, Maybe I do deserve Charlie, some kind of a We're going to work this out together. We're going to work this out together, Charlie. Now, relax. Yeah. Be calm. Okay. I'll get you a drink. Now, just be calm. Yeah, I'll yeah. get you a drink. Right, right. Think of something, George. Please. We will. There are any number of possibilities, and we're going to try them all. Uh, Charlie, you're out of vodka. Yeah, well, well, try the bookcase. I used to hide stuff there from the maid. The bookcase. What possibilities, George? Name something. Well, in the first place, there's a chance this whole thing might blow over. Of course, then, we're in a clear where in a bookcase, Charlie. Uh, thine war and peace. Where else would you hide vodka in a bookcase? War and peace. War and peace. But what if it doesn't blow over, George? War and peace. Then what? Then, in that case, we've got the whole medical profession to go back on. You know, it could be glandular. Maybe it's your metabolism. Maybe a good psychiatrist might even help. Honest, well, George, you think that might help? I don't know, but it's worth a shot, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I might as well. The shape I'm in, I'll try anything. That's the spirit. Now, there's this doctor in Beverly Hills. What's his name? Uh, Kessler, Kiesler, Kess, something like that. But he's treated practically all of Crafty's clients, and they swear by him. Say he's a wizard. I'm going to make an appointment for you this afternoon. Let me see. Oh, George, I don't know what I would have done if I had to face this without you. Oh, forget it. You're the only friend I've got. I wouldn't say that. George, what are those things? Were you running a floating bingo game? No, we had a uh, memorial service for you here yesterday. Another one? Mm-hmm. Good crowd, huh? Well, uh, actually, uh, uh, we did our best to keep it down. You know, just the real chums. I delivered a sort of a, well, a eulogy, I guess you'd call it. You should have seen how affected they were. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. Thanks, kid. A memorial service. Eh, why not? Charlie Sorrell is finished, left hook and all. All that's left of me is this. Now, Charlie, you've got to make an effort to look at the bright side of things. So you're a girl. So what? It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Did it hurt Garbo being a girl? What about Madame Curie, uh, Florence Nightingale, Harriet Beecher Stowe? Girls, all girls. Yeah, sure, I'll bear it in mind. And while you're looking at the bright side, what about that 75 grand you owe the government in back income taxes? Hmm? They're gonna have a pretty tough time trying to collect, aren't they? 
I say, I like <laughs> that aspect. Mm -hmm. Now, first things first. You've got to have uh, something to wear. I'll zip down to that little boutique in Malibu and buy you something. A house dress or something. Huh. Okay, a pants and shirt for a starter. Something that'll be easier for you to handle. And, uh... I'm gonna have to get you something for underneath uh, here and uh, and here. Yes, just my luck. Only last week I bought two dozen pairs of jockey shorts. I'd say you're about a size. Okay, seven. George, get cracking. While you're gone, I'll shower and shave. Here's something, Charlie. A basic concept of religious life in ancient Egypt was the principle of reincarnation. That's you, Charlie, reincarnation. In general, the transmigration of the soul was reserved for those who had on earth led worthy and wholesome lives. And these fortunate souls returned in the form of <laughs> birds. You want to try flapping your wings, Charlie? Similar beliefs. Hey, George, uh, come here. Huh? George, look at this. Similar beliefs existed among certain prehistoric Inca and Mayan peoples. However, the priests thought that souls survived on Earth as a living shrub, tree, or other foliage. And... How about that? Good old Mother Nature. Imagine. I don't have to go see Bridget Bardot movies anymore. All I have to do is come home and pull down the shades. What a nutty way to talk. And will you button your blouse? Okay. It's wild, isn't it? I feel so darn, well, feminine. In the bathroom, I had a sudden desire, came out of nowhere, to paint my toenails. Paint your toenails? What are you, some kind of a... Now look, right now we have an awful lot of business to discuss. Your affairs are in a terrible mess. Mine is the mind of Charlie Sorrell. I don't have to tell you what that's like. But it's all mixed up with something kind of soft and tender and clingy. Uh... Now, Charlie, don't let uh, this thing get you all uh, twisted and uh, turned inside. I mean, remember, steady and calm. I'm fine. What's wrong with you? Me? Nothing. Nothing at all. Hey, George, you think I'm attractive. Man to man, George, tell me the truth, huh? Uh, Charlie, you are uh, un undoubtedly a, a very attractive uh, girl. And now, do you mind? Let's get down to business, huh? Business, business, business. Is that all you can talk about? No wonder American women are so frustrated. Charlie, you're broke. Did you know that? I mean, this is your estate, of which you so kindly made me your executor. You're not only broke, you're bankrupt. And I can't help you, because I spent practically the last of my dough getting here for your lousy funeral. You know, George, it hurts me to see you worrying about money. You're an artist, George. A fine and sensitive person. Mm -hmm. Well, climb down off that daydream, Charlie. You're in hock up to your ears. Charlie Sorrell was. Poor Charlie. Just what's going on in that twisted little mind of yours, Chicky? I'm not sure, George. But I'm full of confidence. I felt it the minute I got into this outfit. Even more... Just before I got into it. This is a town full of suckers, George. We both know that. Male, female, or what have you. And I'm fully equipped to handle anything. Don't tell me that you think of this as just a springboard to some new racket. And I didn't ask for this. I'm stuck with it. Just tell me one thing. How do I live? You're a writer, aren't you? And you're experiencing something that must be, to put it mildly, unique. Just think what Tennessee Williams would give to be in your shoes. Or Arthur Miller. Or Henry Miller. 
Yes, it has literary possibilities. Definitely. Thanks, George, for straightening me out. Oh, that's okay, uh, Charlie. Well, I, uh, I uh, think we'd better give these papers a shot and see what we can salvage. Company, for Pete's sakes. I'll tell you what, Charlie, you go duck into the bedroom and whoever it is, I'll get rid of him. Go ahead. Hello. Oh, how would think he's in Santa Barbara. Oh, very nice. Thank good, you, sir. I, I was driving into the city, and I thought I'd just uh, stop and... Oh, of course. Uh, you, you want your coat. I'll get it for you. Just a minute. Your coat. Oh, no, sir. No, I didn't come for my... Gun. <coughs> Sorry, me. sir. I, I didn't come for my coat. I thought I would just stop and uh, inquire about the health of the, uh, the young lady. Well, the health of the young lady is fine. That's of you to inquire. She seemed so ill last night. Are you sure she's really uh, herself well, again? That's a moot point. But uh, she had a marvelous night's sleep last night, and I'm... Hello. Oh, hello. Won't you come in? Yes. With pleasure. Gee, you really are better, aren't you? I, I, I'm glad. It's so good of you to be concerned about me. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, permit me to introduce myself. I, I'm Bruce Minton, the third. Uh, uh, George Tracy, the, um, uh, uh, and, uh, this is... Mrs. Charles Sorrell. Uh, uh, Mrs. Charles Sorrell. I'm delighted to meet you. Uh, Mrs. Sorrell? Yes. I'm a widow. Oh, I'm sorry. It was tragic, really. I lost my husband. One of the finest men I've ever known. Taken from me. Cut down in the sunshine of his youth, talent, and beauty. But life belongs to the living. We must go on. And uh, we have a thousand things to do. I want to thank you for your kindness last night. Oh, I was only too glad to be able to help. Oh, I mean, there I was, wandering around in that awful state. I, I, I might have been picked up by just anybody, some awful person, instead of by a, a gentleman. Thank you. Oh, I know a poor widow's gratitude isn't much, but... Oh, it is, it is. It means a great deal to me. I mean, to know you're well and, and recovered makes me very happy. Oh, that's very kind to worry about a total stranger. Of course, now that I'm well, we don't have to be strangers. Hello, Dr. Ca Dr. Castle's office. Yes, uh, I would like to make an appointment, please. It's an emergency. Mrs. Charles... No, no, not next Thursday at 4 o'clock. That's out of the question. Um, well, couldn't you ship one of your patients? This emergency might explode any minute. Oh, thank you. Are you driving that sweet new Ferrari today? Yes. It's marvelous in black. My favorite color. Know, it's mine, too. Hmm. That's the new four carburetor model with a special sports body by LaFranco. Mother ordered it for me uh, last birthday. I hope you'll accept a ride in it when you're fully recovered. Oh, with pleasure, Bruce, with pleasure. Oh, my goodness, look at the time. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I have to run. I must get into town and do something about my hair. It's a mess. George! Oh, uh, George, dear, I'll need the keys to the car. Oh, and, uh, George, uh, you still have that charge account at Saks Fifth Avenue, no, don't you? No, wait a I minute. I just need a few I've... things. Mm, thank you, George. Isn't he Marvy? I don't know what I would have done without George through this whole thing. Bye, Bruce. Excuse me, George. Excuse me. Just a minute. George, I'm in a terrible rush. Well, you... slow down. Now, what was that disgusting little two-shot in there? I was only trying out the new equipment. And George, it really works. It's dynamite. I really had his motor racing. I haven't done anything yet. Sax is out. I got you an appointment with this Dr. Kessel at 3 o'clock. Here's the address. Who? The psychiatrist. Me? Oh, I don't need that now, George. I'm fine. But you don't know how tough it is to get an appointment with this cat. I well, why don't you keep I... it, George? Me? Yes, you're in terrible shape. You could crack up any minute. I'm really worried about you. Uh, see you later, George. Uh, excuse me, sir? Uh, uh, Mr. Tracy, may I ask you a question? 
you any personal, uh, that is to say, uh, emotional interest in Mrs. Sorrell? I, I admit to you, frankly, I'd like to see her again. But, but not if I'm trespassing on... I happen to be his best friend. That is, our husband's. And in his will, he made me executor. That is, his executor to her estate. Now, that's quite clear, isn't it? Yes. Th then it's all right with you if I call on Mrs. Sorrell again. Uh, quite honorably, of course, I assure you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And may I add, sir, you've made me very happy. Very happy indeed. See you then. May I help you? Yes, I'd like the works. Everything? Uh, yeah. Everything. You're new here, aren't you? Honey, I'm new everywhere. May I have your name, please? Mrs. Charles Sorrell. <laughs> I see Franny Salzman is having herself done today. You know Mrs. Salzman? I know her. She doesn't know me. Uh, but, but you might tell her I'm here. She's not in yet, but I'll be glad to tell her. Will you follow me, please? Yes. Love to. Yes. Gabrielle, have you yes. finished with Mrs. Carter yet? Oh, no. She's having this out of Thank you. Connie. What booth do we have vacant for Mrs. Sorrell? There's booth 12. Oh, that's too small. She wants to have everything. I can give you number 5. That's fine, thank you. This way, Mrs. Sorrell. Mrs. Sorrell. Oh, uh. Sydney. Sydney. Sydney! Well, look what those fools have done to me. Look at the color of that. It's fine. It's exactly what I wanted. Don't worry about a thing. You'll love it. Oh, brother, those clothes. Now, if you'll just slip into this smock. Crazy. And I'll send an operator right away. Thanks a million. You've been true blue. It's funny. Not the same thing at all. I don't want it too curly. I told you that from the beginning. Mrs. Salzman, it won't be too curly when I tease Excuse it up. Excuse me. Mrs. Salzman, do you know a Mrs. Charles Sorrell? Mrs. Charles Sorrell doesn't know such a person. Well, the lady in booth five insists she's Mrs. Charles Sorrell, and she says she knows you. Are you sure? Why, that's Did you know that Charlie Sorrell had a wife? One of his own? I don't believe it. She's here now! What? In both five! Come in, girls. Uh, come in. Uh, let me guess. Which one of you is Franny Salzman? Oh, I'm Franny, and this is Janie Hyland. Oh, oh, yes. My husband often talked about you. You were uh, married to Charlie? You seem surprised. Oh, no, no. It's just that uh, he never mentioned having a wife. Well, he wanted to keep it a secret. He was afraid it might hurt his career. I know what career he meant, too. I hate to speak ill of the departed, but... I'm afraid Charlie was just a teeny bit naughty. You know how men are. And I'll say one thing for Charlie, he was all man. Oh, he always told me what he'd been up to. And I cried a little, but I forgave him. He uh, told you? Uh, always? Oh, he was like a little boy. So winning, so dear to me. You don't know how I miss him. I can imagine. I'll bet you can. Uh, look, we have so much to talk about. Why don't we... Oh, oh well, I'd love to, but I... Yes, yeah, and I have a board meeting. It's for mental health. Oh, it's not healthy to skip lunch. Not this lunch. Uh, the bistro? One o'clock? <laughs> Fine. Yeah, I can make it. Oh, that's lovely. 
I see you after dainty time, girls. How do you want your nails, Mrs. Sorrell? Uh, long and sharp. Now for the latest developments in the case of the internationally famous motion picture producer, Sir Leopold Sartori. Sir Leopold, who was freed yesterday on $50,000 bail, appeared in court with his attorneys... Yes, yes, I'm aware that Mr. Sorrell left a great many unpaid debts, yes. ...well-known screenwriter, who was a guest on the Sartori yacht when the fatal incident took place. Janie, will you sit over here and Franny Rex? Thank you. Now... I uh, notice you're not wearing a wedding ring. No. Now that I'm a widow, there's no use cramping my style. I know it may sound heartless with poor Charlie moldering at the bottom of the ocean. Nothing but fish bait, really. But after all, we're not living in the dark ages when a wife used to throw herself into the flames. I mean, it's not as if Charlie had been faithful to me or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Shall we order now? A uh, Captain. Uh, you know, I had a very special reason for wanting to talk to you girls. Really? Yes, I'm not going to bore you with any figures, but the fact is, Charlie left me practically penniless. Now, I could stay here and try modeling, or maybe even the movies. I'm sure you girls would want to help me, or your husbands. But what I'd really like to do is to get far away from Hollywood, maybe back to Europe. Unfortunately, I'm penniless. Oh, that is too bad, sweetie. You must let me help you. Oh, and me too. I'd love to help you get away from all these unpleasant memories. Oh, I knew Charlie's friends would be my friends too. Oh, waiter, waiter. A couple of blank checks and a pen, please. Yes, ma'am. After all, you would only need a one-way ticket, wouldn't you, when everybody goes economy class these days? Yes, and for a while you'd want to live quietly. Well, for Charlie's sake, I'd have to keep up some appearances, but I could get by nicely on $10,000. Uh, that's only five and five. Oh, well, frankly, dear, I'm dying to help you get away, but not quite that far. That is true, sweetie. Mm. All right, girls. If you can't help me with cash, maybe you could give me some advice. Oh, all you want. Like a shot, sweetie, like oh, a shot. Please, oh, please, that word. Oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I'll have to fall back on my one other asset. Charlie's diary. It would make the most marvelous series of newspaper, a magazine articles. Hollywood Bachelor by his wife, or Midnight at Malibu. Charlie kept a diary. Writers. Day by day. And sometimes when he was rushed, hour by hour. But you know, with all this publicity going on right now, I think it would bring a terrific prize. Thank you. Now, uh, who do you think would be the best agent for that kind of a deal? Or... Perhaps you could ask your husbands. Uh, there's one entry that would make a play or a movie all by itself. It's about uh, a weekend in San Francisco, a wild night in a tattoo parlor of all places. And uh, about the time he and a certain young lady were locked up overnight in Disneyland. Apparently to Charlie, nothing was sacred. Think of it. Disneyland. Are you trying to tell me that you sold a story? Mm-hmm. To whom? Oh, a couple of independents. Uh, nobody you'd know. You've been away so long. Well, that's great, Charlie. The down payment was ten grand. Mm. There'll be a lot more. Oh, a lot more. I'm doing it as a posthumous memoir of Charlie Sorrell. Well, that's terrific, Charlie. You ought to do it in the form of a diary. George, that's genius. A diary. Why can't I ever think of things like that? Well. Oh. Hello? Uh, this is the seaside home of the late, great Charles Sorrell. Who? Oh, yeah, he's right here. Here, George. Hello? Who? Uh... Yes, uh, put him on. You will not believe who is calling me on the phone. Sir Leopold. Hello, Leo? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, uh, I, I heard it on television. Congratulations. Yes, it's a very good picture of you. Uh, no, it doesn't make you look a bit old. What? Tonight? You're not serious. Are you ready for this? 
He's giving himself a coming out party, and he's got the nerve to invite me. A party? That's wonderful. No, I'm sorry, uh, Leo. I couldn't possibly make it. Oh, yeah, you could. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you I just got off a plane. It's been a very long flight. You know, the change of hours and everything. Uh, well, uh, listen, I'd better take a rain check. Well, uh, hold on for a second, please. What are you doing? I want to go. You will go to his party, the man who killed you? Live and let live, please, George. No! Uh, Leo, can we keep it open? Uh, if I can possibly make it, but uh, don't count on it. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Leo. Right. You and Satori at his party to celebrate his release for murdering you. That's not only indecent, it's insane. Uh, Welcome oh, home, oh, oh, Leo. Before my friend, my very dear friend. Oh, my humble home. Truly, were it a palace, it could not be more dear to me than these four walls, this handful of belongings. See that the air conditioning is turned on downstairs in the bowling alley. Yes. I do not wish to discuss the tragedy in which I was involved. In fact, it would be most indiscreet, since the case is, as we say in Latin, sub judice. However, my experiences have already inspired me to embark on a new film based on the imprisonment of Galileo, starring Richard Burton. Bravo! Bravo! Stefan, bring me a cable blank immediately. I will wire Dickie an outline of the story straight away. Yes, sir, Leo. How can I describe to you how I felt when the great prison doors clanged open and I was a free man with the green earth under my feet and the clear blue sky up above? Sir Leopold, how long were you locked up? About 45 minutes. Rusty, dear. Pardon, Sir Leopold, if the champagne is ready to serve. Champagne? Oh, forgive me. Too cold. You must allow the wine to breathe for a few minutes after it's poured before you serve. Welcome home, Sir Leopold. Welcome home, Sir Leopold. So nice. It's so wonderful, all of you. Dinner will soon be served. They will be dancing, of course. Also, the Hollywood String Quartet will play in the small library. And in my private projection room, there will be a screening of the new art film, Hoki Charusi, a Japanese version of Little Women. I could not on short notice arrange anything elaborate for this evening. I ask you to forgive me, and I want to thank you one and all for coming here tonight. This is extraordinary. Kelsu, you are the girl I so much admired in the ups and downs of the Aztec Empire. You did? But I, I was just one of the human sacrifices. There were 18 of us. You were much more human. Still are. Good evening, Mr. Tracy. How oh, nice to have you back again. Thank you, Rivington. Good evening. Where's the Leopold? Mr. Leopold, uh, he's in the cellar, sir. Where's the little girl's room? Oh, the powder room is at the top of the stairs, madam. Thank you. Hurry and don't talk to anybody. I'll be back in just a teeny little second, George. Hello, Franny. Oh, George, how are you? I'm so glad to see Excuse me, George. Janie, nice to see you. Oh, uh, George, how are you? My darling, the Sartori Foundation, which I created to help young and unusual talents, has one remaining scholarship. We will discuss it in the greenhouse behind the pool. I want you to see my orchids. A bientôt, chérie. Well, if it isn't Bat Sartori, the fastest gun in Beverly Hills. George! Welcome! Did you come alone, George? <laughs> uh, no, my date is, uh, it's in the powder room. Anyone I know? But no, it's a, it's a new face. Uh, could I have a double scotch over the ice and make it a triple? George, I want to thank you for coming tonight. I thought, well, after all, you were Charlie's best friend. I was, I am, and I guess I always will be. But that was a private thing, and it doesn't make you my enemy. I hope you beat the rap. 
For that matter, I hope they take that trigger finger of yours and put it in uh, wet cement outside of Grumman's Chinese. <laughs> that is very handsome of you, George. <laughs> you know, all this has amazed even me. Since 30 years, I have been producing pictures. I am successful, talented, not unattractive. And then I shoot one writer. One little writer. And suddenly I have become glamorous. Girls who would never respond at all are now calling me and begging for rendezvous in the San Fernando Valley. I remember when crime didn't pay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you are, George. Um, may I present our host? My house and I are yours to command. Leopold Sartori. Oh, Sir Leopold Sartori. They insisted. The Queen, such a lovely woman. George, you are not going to introduce us properly? Uh, of course. Uh, I'd like to present uh, Mrs. Charles Sorrell. Mrs. Charles Sorrell? You are the wife of Charles? Widow. If I were not Hungarian by birth, I would be speechless. What a scene. The best friend, the widow, the killer. George, why don't you go somewhere and write it? My dear, if I could undo the wrong I have done you, if I could bring Charlie back now, tonight, I wouldn't. That is the greatest compliment I have ever paid a woman. George, I cannot allow you to pass up the dramatic opportunity of a lifetime. Go into my private library. There you will find paper, typewriter, everything you need. Lock yourself in. Go, write. My dear, you are exquisite. Like the fragile beauty of an early Mozart quartet. Like the fire and depth of an El Greco. Like the cool perfection of a Cellini. You're still here? Like a mountain carved by Guts and Borglum. Are you seriously making a play for me? In a word, yes. But don't let me rush you. We will discuss it later after dinner. It's your fault that I am a widow. That's Sir Leopold. Too big a man to hold a grudge. Right. Besides, my dear child, someday you'll thank me. You feel no remorse? Not even a twinge? You put an end to the promising career of a brilliant young writer. My darling, it is my painful duty to disillusion. Poor Charlie's talent was gone. He had become a hack writer. I will have my valet. Make a tracing of the marks of your fingers upon my face. A tout à l'heure, chérie. Now, can we go home? No, I'm hungry. And, uh, George, look who's coming to join us for supper. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing in a place like this. I get sick even in bullfights. My dad would never let me associate with show business people. Bankers, you know how prejudiced they are. But I happened to be in Europe alone last summer, and there I was in the reading room of the British Museum in London. You met Charlie in a museum? And we were both looking up fertility symbols among the Australian primitives. Well, anyway, there I was up on this ladder doing nothing but pure research. Janie Hyland said you met Charlie on the beach at Cannes. You told Franny Salzman the same thing. Uh, uh, that was later. They misunderstood. Well, uh, there I was on this ladder, and, and suddenly I looked down, and there was Charlie looking up. You didn't I... tell me you met Franny and Janie. We, uh, we had lunch at the bistro together. Uh, such lovely girls. Uh, where was I? Lunching with Franny and Janie. Tell us about that. Uh, Oh, well, it was just girl talk, you know. Uh, come on, George, dance with me. I don't twist. But I'll teach you, it's fun. I'll bet you and the twist were made for each other, you cheap little hustler. Just a minute. No wonder Charlie never told anyone he was married. He was probably ashamed of you. Lord knows when it came to character, Charlie wasn't very much. 
But compared to you, he was St. Francis of Assisi. Well, you've got your money, so get out of town fast. What money? What are you talking about? Just jealousy. She couldn't get anywhere with Charlie, so now she's taking it out on me. She blackmailed Franny and Janie out of $10,000 this afternoon by threatening to publish Charlie's diary. Get rid of her, George. She's poisoned. You don't understand. I had to have money. You said so yourself. Yeah, but I didn't know what you were willing to do to get it. What am I doing that's so bad? A couple of rich, spoiled broads, and I'm relieving them of a few bucks they'll never even miss. And don't forget, women owe me something. After all, didn't I get shot in the line of duty? And the way that Rusty laid into me, I thought she was my friend. You don't have a friend, Charlie. You never had. Just victims and suckers, and I ought to know because I was on the list. Well, I'm through. I'm quitting the mob. I'm going straight. Okay, quit. You're such a boy scout. What do you think this is out here? A Sunday school with swimming pools and palm trees? Well, it's not. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog civilization, and if you want to get the first prize, you've got to get the first bite. All right, Charlie. You're right, and I'm wrong. But there's one thing I think you ought to know. You know that memorial service we had for you? Well, there weren't 50 or 60 people. There were four. Your agent and three friends. The two girls you hijacked today and me. The next time they'll be able to hold your memorial service in an airmail envelope. Well, goodbye, Charlie. Are you waiting for Mr. Tracy? Yes, ma'am. I drove him out and I'm waiting to take him to the airport. George? No, thanks. <sighs> Hollywood parties. You're right about one thing, George. We should have stood home. Oh, I don't know. Some of it was interesting. Touche. You really going? Mm-hmm. I'm taking the midnight flight to New York City and then the noon flight tomorrow for Paris. Got a match, George? Look, George. The ten grand I got from the girls. Up in smoke. George, please. How sorry can I get? You don't need me, Charlie. I do. Oh, George, will you give me a chance? I was a fink and a hustler for 36 years, and now suddenly I'm an ingenue. But this is only my first day. I don't know how to handle it. So I reverted to type, and I did something lousy. I know it. I admit it. Okay, Charlie. I guess it was only natural. George. If you go... I'll panic. Not you, Charlie. Not you. I'm not Charlie. I'm... I'm whatever this is. A throwback. A, a werewolf. Something from the deep lagoon. And I'm scared. I'm scared, George. But at least this way with... with us, I... I can talk to you. But, but alone, I'll... I'll fly apart. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh not that. <laughs> there. There. I'm sorry. Th that's all right. <laughs> no, look at me. No. I, I hate girls that cry. All right, now. You cry it out. Feel better. Oh, I, I'll be a good girl. Of course. I promise. I know. No. I won't do anything bad. Yes. No. Yes. No. I'll get a job as a waitress. Oh, a maid! 
Now, don't worry. I'm here. I'll take care of you. Oh, oh George. Oh, oh, thank you. Feel better? Huh? I'd like to blow my nose. No, I'll wait. You see? Now everything's going to be all right. What's the matter? Matter? We were practically necking. It was nice. You and me, that's nice. I felt so secure. Wanted. Wanted? Well, I can't help it if I'm feminine, can I? I need affection. I don't know what's gotten into you, George. You're always getting hung up on small, helpless girls. Well, here I am. No, George, you promised. I promised and I'll stay, but not here. Oh, I'm going to get a room down at the motel down the road. <laughs> and we'll talk about it in the morning. Don't bother sing me out. i got a cab waiting. Goodbye, Charlie. <laughs> Perfect way out. We'll get married. That's great. Then I'll be Mrs. George Tracy. Oh, that's brilliant. Just brilliant. That's perfect. We're pals. We've lived together. Now, how many couples do you know ever start married life with so much going for them, huh? That's uh, good creative thinking, Charlie. I've been a bachelor for 36 years and I am not embarking on the sea of matrimony with a wife named Charlie. And put that thing back on. You mean to tell me that you were on the beach with those two bits of nothing? You talk like a husband already. What a brain! We, we play and drink together for years. We chase girls together. We even use the same rowing machine. Now what do we do? We get married. Charming. Who do you want for your bridesmaids? The Los Angeles Dodgers? George. Ugh. George, it's what you said about identity. I mean, I've got to be Mrs. Somebody, even if it's only for long enough to get a passport and a driver's license. I need a husband. Charlie, what you're contemplating is unnatural, illegal, and probably fattening. And whoever that is, I'll be delighted to see him. Good morning. I, I hope I'm not intruding. Bruce, how nice. I brought you these. They're from Mother's Garden in Santa Barbara. Oh, Bruce, they're lovely. I, I've got the car, the, the Ferrari, outside, and I, I thought you might like to join me for a little spin up the coast toward the, my oh, place. That's perfect. Oh, I'll just skip in and change. Uh, George, put these in water like an angel, will you, dear? Uh, I'll just be a teeny little second uh, boy. You're a, a writer, aren't you, Mr. Tracy? Uh, I was when I left Paris. I don't know anymore. Tell me, I, do you make up what you write, or, or does it come from real life? It, it just seems to happen. I envy you. I could never be a writer. Anyway, nothing worth writing about ever seems to happen to me. Bruce, you never know. the house? Oh, it's five or six miles up that way. Uh, light? Oh, yes. Mm. Mm. Thanks. Oh, what a pretty lighter. Thank you. I, I, I don't smoke, but Mother does. Five or six miles? Yes. You see, at the house, there's just a few hundred acres, and I never seem to be able to get off by myself. So, 
Mother bought me this piece of beach. This whole stretch? Yes, it's nice. I, I can come down here and just sit and think. What do you think about, Bruce? Oh, Mother, mostly, and my cars. I've got this little Maserati, the sweetest little racer you ever saw. Four-liter job, 4,200 cc's, milled heads, augmented camshaft. I, I don't know what's gotten into her right now. She seems to be a pretty sick little car. Just won't accelerate. What about her air holes? Are they plugged? I, I thought of that first thing. But they were as clean as a whistle. What's her bore and stroke? Three and a half by two and a half. Magnetos or distributor? Magneto. Uh, tooth velocity. Uh, that's your problem, Bruce. Have you stripped her? Not yet. Do it. Never mind your feelings about her, Bruce. Strip her. She'll thank you for it in the long run. You really think so? I will. I will. And then put an overdrive unit between her differential housings. And a little alcohol in her mixture. That always helps. Please, Mrs. Sorrell. Let's do it together. Of course, Bruce. Oh, Anytime. this... Anytime. This is so exciting, I can't wait to tell Mother. <laughs> Me too. Mrs. Sorrell. Darling. You are seriously picturing yourself as a bride? Yes. I'm beautiful. Every eye in the church is on me as I walk down the aisle, the organ peeling. You are discussing marriage as if you were a sweet girl graduate at Vassa, leader of the daisy chain. You're a tennis bum, and a beach bum, and a ski bum, and now, God help us all, you want to be a marriage bum. And you ask me why I'm so steamed. Oh, uh, for a minute there, while you were carrying on, you sounded as though you were jealous. Jealous? Now that's really from Birdland. Look, George, as we both know, I have a problem. Yeah. I've come up with a solution. You may not like it, but at least it's something. Meanwhile, I don't hear any big ideas emanating from your corner. Charlie, I have got a plan. Sit down. George, you sound serious. I am serious. Now, what I'm about to propose is dangerous. Sit down. And while you don't seem to realize it, your situation is dangerous. Now, suppose I get you across the border to Canada, or, or better yet, Mexico. Now, we hole up there until I locate someone who can get you a phony passport. And using that, I get you to Europe, Switzerland to one of those fabulous private clinics where they don't ask any questions and they juggle your hormones like Indian clubs in a vaudeville act. Now, all I have to do is find someone who knows the ropes in this kind of an operation in it. What's the matter? What's so funny? <laughs> I'm sorry, George. You, George, in that kind of action? Oh, sweetie. You couldn't smuggle a two-dollar watch past a blind customs inspector. No, I used to be pretty devious, but even I couldn't attack that problem. Hey, this is for sharpshooters, George. Not squares. Battle stations! Uh, Nighty-night, dear. And uh, don't wait up for me. I'll be late. Mwah. And don't worry, Georgie. Love will find a way. Surprise! I, I can't ready. believe it! It's a miracle! <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Do 
name, Mr. Tracy. Yeah, that's right. What is it? Uh, the inspector. Well, I mean, uh, what can I do for you? I've been assigned to the Sorrell case. Oh, I should have known who you were by your raincoat. <laughs> uh, can I take it for you? No. Uh, the Sorrell case, huh? Well, there's not much to that, is there? I mean, it's an open and shut case. Uh, it's a Leopold, uh, jealous rage, uh, a crime of passion, and <laughs> there you are. <laughs> I like the way you put that. Well, well, that's the way it is. I mean, according to the newspapers, it is. Mr. Tracy, do you mind if I sit down? Well, if you're, of course. Thanks. Oh, that's better. Um, uh, a drink? I'm on duty. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my. Uh, that's uh, Mrs. Sorrell's, uh, Charlie's widow. Oh, is uh, she staying here too, Mr. Yes, she, well, she is. I'm not. I mean, I was staying here when she came. I left and moved to a motel down the road. Oh, that was the widow then. It was leaving just before I ran. Uh, yes, that was the widow leaving. She didn't seem terribly upset, did she? Well, uh, uh, she she is. She really is, really. I mean, uh, she's covering it. Yeah. Mm. Last night you went to the Sartori party, you and Mrs. Sorrell. That's right. Mm. The widow and the best friend socializing with the murderer? Uh, <laughs> that's your business. <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> Mr. Tracy, do you mind if I take a look around? Not at all. Why should I mind? You should. I don't. Thank you. Well, thanks very much. That's all? I'll take that drink now, Miss Tracy, if it's still available. You mean now you're off duty? No, now I'm thirsty. Hmm. Uh, bourbon on the rocks. Bourbon. Well, this is very kind of you, Mr. Tracy, and I certainly appreciate it. I just hope that I'm not putting you to any kind of inconvenience. No inconvenience at all. It's uh, just that I, well, uh, wondered what you were after. Ah, well, uh, if I knew that, uh, <laughs> good luck. <clears throat> Staying in town long, Mr. Tracy? Um, well, no, not very long. Uh, I live in Paris, you know, and I've only just arrived. As a matter of fact, when poor Charlie got it, I was uh, 6,000 miles away in Beeritz. <laughs> oh, well, that's a pretty good alibi. Uh, well, I don't need an alibi. Fine, forget it. I want you to be aware that I've done nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, have I? <laughs> oh, Mr. Tracy. Don't you know that people often do things they're not even aware of having done? And then... Bingo. They're in trouble. Well, I'm going to take you, for example. If you were to know something about this case, and they kept that knowledge from the police, do you know that's a felony? Hmm. And then, uh, let's say that you and somebody, anybody else, were involved together in this. Well, now, that's conspiracy. That's a felony, a real Mm. And then, of course, there are a lot of little side dishes like uh, mm, fraud and perjury and, and subornation. And, uh, hell, you're up to about 175 years already. And you've hardly done anything. <laughs> well, you see what I mean, Mr. Tracy. Uh, Good night. Uh, Inspector. Good night. Well, thanks for the drink. Certainly. George Tracy calling. 
it happens to be Sir Leopold's poker evening, sir. Oh, where is he playing poker? At his office? Where's that? <laughs> meeting mother this weekend, I'm afraid. She's in San Francisco on business. But you're seeing the house, and the house is mother. <laughs> mother won't have a decorator, you know, not in any of our houses. She feels very strongly about anything that gets in the way of her own personality. Hmm. I'd say mother was barking up the right tree. Yes. Oh, this is the, uh, the television room. Shall we have a little something to drink? We? You and I? Both of us? Of course. I'm not a teetotaler. Not on special occasions. Mother's birthday, when a Republican president's inaugurated. Is uh, this one of those special occasions? I hope it will be. Go on, Bruno. Oh, it's, uh, uh, Charlene. Charlene. That's beautiful. Charlene, I, I hope you won't think I'm too forward, uh, but I have dared to presume on our brief acquaintance. What's that? I, I, I took the liberty of calling Mr. Harry Winston in New York, and, and he flew this out personally. I hope he flew on an armored plane. Uh, may I? Oh. difficult for me to say because of the way I feel but I'm going to have to insist on a on a rather long engagement you are yes I'm as eager as you are Bruce darling but well, I can't just let you sweep me off my feet now can I Bruce oh my dear yes no no this mood you're in it's so so masterful and overpowering it's it's dangerous you feel that, don't you, Bruce? Oh, oh, I, I know what you're thinking, Bruce, darling, that Las Vegas is only an hour's flight from here and you want to whisk me there and marry me tonight. And there are those all-night charter flight services, but we have to fight these impulses. And my goodness, the way you drive, we could be at the airport in minutes, and oh, that would be awful, wouldn't it, Bruce? Yes. Yes? It would never work. No, of course not. I mean, driving to the airport at this hour and all that traffic? No, no. I'm chartering a helicopter. By the time we've had our little celebration drink, we'll be on our way. Oh, I can't fight you any longer, Bruce. You're too strong. Pacific Charter, this is Mr. Menton. Like your small helicopter and your best pilot as soon as possible. What? On the lawn at the rear of the house. To take us to the airport. I'll also need your small jet for a charter flight to Las Vegas. Right. Thank you. Oh, Charlene, darling. That drink. I'd love to. But uh, there doesn't seem to be anything. Oh, we'll on find there. something downstairs. I'd better go first. It's uh, a little dark.
bumper over privileged producers. Thanks, you one and all. Uh, the devil's in the cards tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, giving him cards is like giving fire water to the Indians. Yeah. 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 more fun in a concrete mixer. <laughs> good night, Leo. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. George, what a pleasant surprise. Are you alone? Yes, come in. George, sit down, sit down. Do you care for a drink, a cigar? Leo, I've come to ask a favor. The biggest. Ooh. It's the sort of thing I've never asked anyone. And I wouldn't dare approach you if I weren't in a real jam. You, George? Yes. A respectable citizen? <laughs> what is it, George? Your, um, your library books are overdue? Come on, Leo, don't joke with me now. It's much too important to me, and it means too much. All right, George, I'm sorry, I understand. Please, go on. Uh, well, I, I want to smuggle someone who hasn't got passports or papers to Mexico and then from there to Europe. Well, good luck, George. I say that with all my heart. But, Leo, give me a clue. Where can I go? Where can I get some help? George, this uh, mysterious someone you speak of is uh, of which sex? What has sex got to do with it? Perhaps it's just the way my mind runs. Oh, I see. Well, it's, um, it's, it's a girl. Ah. Uh, and, Leo, it's very important to me, and I, I have to act on it tonight. Uh, but why no passport, George? Is she a fugitive? Uh, no. Actually, uh, she has a passport. Uh, but, you see, she's, uh, she's married, and it's a joint passport. Oh, I see. And you do not wish to invite the husband along on the trip. <laughs> yes, in general, that works out best. Is, uh, is it someone I know? No. Well, that is, they're not in, uh, in films or on the stage. They're, they're civilians. L Leo, you've got to help me, or I'm finished. George, it is a very good thing, if I say so myself, that you have come to me with your problem. Why do I say that? Because, A, essentially, I am a very romantic person. B, I like you. C, I am resourceful. D, I am slightly crooked. And, in an operation like this, that is vital. Maritime operator, San Pedro Yacht Basin, please. Good evening, miss. Sir Leopold Sartori is speaking. My yacht, the Aphrodite, is cruising towards Coronado. Please call my captain and have him return to San Pedro at once. I want him there tonight. Yes, thank you. Rafael, Sartori, buenas noches, amigo. I will need your help later on tonight. See you in two hours. I want your fastest motor boot and two of your most reliable men. What? No, no. They need not be armed. San Pedro Yacht Basin in two hours. Right. George, my dear boy, you are practically in Mexico with a glass of tequila in your hand and your lady friend by your side. You don't seem pleased. It's just that I'm, I guess, overcome is the only word I can think of. What a really terrific guy you are. No, 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 no. Come on now, don't shrug it off. You've done something for me tonight that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. And you've taught me one very important lesson. Never judge anybody by appearances only. Up to now in the past, I've always thought highly of you as a picture maker. But I'm ashamed to say I had a very low opinion of you as a man. Uh, forget it, George. Forget all about it. We all make mistakes. Never. And I would like to add one final word. If anyone dare criticize you in my presence, I can assure you they will have me to answer to personally. I appreciate that, George. I find it deeply touching. Leo. And now for the next step. Yes. The travel documents. I will need to be alone for that, you yes, understand? Yes, I'm completely in your hands. Good. Go to the bistro. Yes. I will contact you there in two hours. Yes. Say nothing and wait. Bistro, two hours and wait. Sir Leopold, is it all right to clean up in here now? Yes, come in, come in. Leo, I want to thank you for... 
Pasquale, Sartori. Come start. You are alone? Splendid. Look, I will need some travel documents. The chap that did such an excellent job on British passports. Is he still around? Ah, wonderful. Yes, he must start tonight. And now, most important, your man must have contacts in at least three European cities. I suggest Geneva, Marseille, and Amsterdam. Watch it, Oh, it's so funny. No, 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 no. How old were you then? Hey, that's what I said. I said, Mother, why must you always go too far? It's so simple. All I want is an orangeade stand like like the other kids, so I can make my own pocket money. <laughs> well, Mother threw herself into that project with the usual bounce. She got her decorator back from Europe to design an orangeade stand with a Venetian motif. I can't stand it. <laughs> so she got the salt cooked up from the ranch to chill and squeeze the oranges and put the Venetian orange stand up against the iron gates of the estate. I wasn't allowed off the ground, you know, so that a customer would drive up and, uh, and I would stand behind the gate and, and reach through and pour the juice into the glass. <laughs> you must have cleaned up. <laughs> well, I, I think I grossed about 65 cents. The overhead came to $1,200. <laughs> Well, it must have been wonderful to grow up that way <laughs> with everything. Sure, it must have been. I've always had everything. I never did anything. Until the night I met you. You're beautiful. So beautiful. Well, on a bride, that's handy. More than beautiful. A loveliness I, I can trust. It gives me confidence. I, I was always very shy. But with you, I, I feel I can say things I, I've never said before. Bruce, we, we don't really know that much about each other. I worship you. I feel happy and, and awed both at once. Partly the champagne. No. 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 That made it possible for me to tell you what you mean to me. How much I love you. It's, a, it's as if all kinds of marvelous music and beautiful, beautiful poetry were all mixed up inside me. You were the source the object of it all. Now listen to me, Bruce. I might not be like that at all. You don't know. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways I love thee to the depth and the breadth and the height You sure there haven't been any phone no, calls No, Mr. For me? Tracy, I'll promise. If somebody calls, I'll let you know. Luigi, please take this hard Mr. Tracy. 
thing we have to Sir Leopold at home, do you know? No, Sir Leopold hasn't been back well, since you know, he left this you morning. Know, I can I, find I, him. Malibu Road and hurry! Rusty. get in. Where's George? Questions, questions, questions. George is waiting, patiently, I hope, some 45 miles from here. I came in from the terrace door, which was open. And while I was waiting, I slipped into one of Charlie's leisure jackets. Excellent fit, don't you agree? And now, my dear, why don't you slip into something more comfortable? That heavy dress. Leo. You know, I'm honestly very happy you came here tonight. This is true? Yes, I want then to talk. Then what are we waiting for? I want to talk. Come, moon of my delight. Leo, I want to talk of to you. Of course, later we will light cigarettes, relax, chat about all sorts of no. things. Now, Leo. Mm -hmm. Your skin is satin. Your body a maddening monument ah! to pleasure and excitement. No, this can't be happening to me. Oh, George was right. This is the punishment that fits the crime. You speak in riddles, my gorgeous sphinx. Leo, I want to help you, Leo. Leo, I beg of you, don't waste your life in an endless pursuit of pleasure. <laughs> Just running from woman to woman. Don't worry about the running. I'm in terrific condition. I fence, you know. And every day I work out with barbells. And in my bedroom I have a trampoline. Come, my little gypsy sweet, my little gypsy sweetheart. Where the dying embers of the campfire still stand in precious water. No, Leo, listen to me. I too was a transgressor. And when I say that, I'm not just whistling Dixie. I was all out. But now I see the emptiness of my life. How shallow it was. No, no. Every word no. you say is truth. Yes. I'm already a better man, no, a finer Leo, person. No, it's so humiliating. No, Leo, 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 no, you've got to listen to me. Now, Leo, in, in this very same room, I behave the way you're behaving now. Tonight it will be perfect. No, Leo, you know, you know, it cannot be. There are reasons. No, 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 Leo, no, no. You rap, think. Rusty, how wonderful to After see... what you put me through, all the screaming and yelling in five different languages, four of which I couldn't even understand. All the names you called me, and you don't even have the, the decency to stay away from Charlie Sorrell's house. The man you murdered. Rusty, don't shoot him! Him! This is for you, you conniving, <laughs> larcenous little tramp. <laughs> Whoever you are, whatever your name is, you're a disgrace to your sex. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you and then I'm going to take it out of the state game commission. Oh, I'm going to collect the no. money on your hide. My friend, my very good friend, and I trusted you. I should have had my head examined. And you, 
a veteran of every motel from here to Oxnard. And you've got to turn righteous and shoot Charlie. Correction, please, just for the record, I shot Charlie. Oh, shut up. She shot Will you shut up and get out of here? And do me a favor, don't bother driving carefully. Because as far as I'm concerned, you... What are you doing? Calling the police. Will you put that phone down? George, tell me. This unwritten law, the right to kill in defense of your home, do you think it will work twice in the same week for the same home? Put that down. But George, the police, they will investigate. Will you forget will... it? Go home and act as if nothing's happened. I'll take care of everything. George! I'll... This is the most beautiful act of self-sacrifice. Will God you God, get will... out? Get out of my life! Go home and shoot each other! All right, come, my poor wife. I will take you home. I have learned a profound and lasting lesson from the tragic events of this past week. George, by the way, be sure to send me the manuscript of your new book the moment it is completed. Bye, sweetie. It was nice seeing you. Oh, he got away from me. I, I hope he didn't frighten you. I, I was just walking him along the beach and he suddenly bolted for your house. He's harmless, really, Charlie. Well, well, what's your name? Virginia Mason. Where do you live? Mm, about a half mile down the beach. How long have you lived there? About eight years, since my parents bought the place. Their names are Ralph and Helen Mason. Say, you all right? Well, could I ask you a question? Uh, you are a girl, aren't you? I mean, you've always been a girl, never anything but a girl? Hm. I swear it. Thanks. Hey, how much of this have you uh, had? Uh, an awful lot, I don't remember. Mm. Uh, well, do you mind not staring at me quite like that? I feel like I'm having a physical for life insurance. Uh, I'm sorry. I think I need a drink. I think you need food. When did you eat last? Uh, I don't remember. Mm. No wonder you look so terrible. Uh, where's the kitchen? Uh, no. Oh, now you just sit right down over there. And uh, stay away from the bar. Say, you're really stocked up with the necessities of life. All you've got is uh, olives and uh, pickled onions and stuffed olives and, uh, let's see, uh, uh, we have ketchup, chili, corned beef hash and uh, corned beef hash. Why don't you just scramble it all together? How about some corned beef hash? I love it. Uh, have you got a can opener? Yeah. Uh, boy. Oh, Charlie. Uh, uh. Say, isn't that nice? He likes yeah, it. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> all right, come on now, Charlie. That's enough now. It's too crowded in here for all of us. Come on, I've got some cooking to do. Come on. 
All right, Charlie. Be a good boy and sit right there. Sit. Sit. Atta boy. Why do you call him Charlie? I don't know. Seems like a good name for him. He likes it. Hey, you look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> I love cooking. Of course, I don't really do too much of it. You know, really, for one person, it's not much fun, so you just... Oh, thank you. So you just find... You don't do too much of it. I only come to the beach on weekends, so I don't... Oh, I teach school, you know, Westwood, elementary grades. I have a little apartment, and uh, I have... It's a bachelor apartment? I'm single, if that's what you mean. Uh, you don't look as though anyone's been feeding you too regularly. I'm single, too, uh, if that's what you mean. Oh. What do you do? Uh, I'm a writer. Oh, what's your name? George Tracy. Oh, of course. George Tracy, I read your last book. Wasn't that? It wasn't meant to be. Where do you live? Paris. Uh, the fact is I just arrived a, a little while ago. I'm due to go back uh, any minute. Oh. It's, uh... On the other hand, it's just to finish a book. I could, um, well, I could do that um, anywhere. Oh? Uh -huh. Right there, right here, in fact. Ah, uh, uh, that, uh, that would be nice. Bye, Charlie. Time you came to grip. <laughs>